everyone, I finally have the light subclass concept ready to go, and it's undergone a few changes. If you remember how I mentioned it before, initially I wanted it to be a Warlock exclusive subclass, and the way to back it up in the lore would have been that Warlocks ascend beyond the void, they go and they learn, from what they learn through Space Mag from the Traveler, they ascend into the next step. They can control the manifestation of light itself. But really, that didn't make sense from a lore perspective for just the Warlocks to get there. Maybe it would make sense for Warlocks to get there a little bit faster because they, they are the more intellectual of the three classes. But I thought to myself, you know, all, all Guardians are made in light. They're resurrected through the light of the Ghost and the Traveler. So it would make sense for the subclass to be universal among the three. So here are my new tweaks and changes for the concept behind a light subclass. I'll start off first with how I think you should trigger this subclass or how I think you should unlock it. Now if you're familiar with the Taken King, of course each new subclass for the three classes had their own story mission from which you unlock them. Now I think that could be cool and it could work, but my idea is a little bit different. I think a light based subclass should be unlocked upon reaching maximum light level. It'll give um, higher, more end game oriented players more of a reason to complete that content over and over again. It's another carrot on the stick to chase. And this subclass will be mainly built around making your character just overpowered. Because as we all know in Destiny, even though you're max light level, you're not as overpowered as you would be in, say, as, say a max level in an MMO like World of Warcraft or something. So, boom, you hit max level, you unlock the new subclass, and you can start going from there. And it, I think it would be better if it didn't require any XP to level up, because if you're already max level and you need to level up a new subclass, that's kind of lame in my opinion. I think it's just give it to you maxed out, but it'll have different perks. And basically, it'll be an extension of the subclass you're already running. It'll just add on. It'll be an additional skill tree, for example. Okay, so here's where it gets a little bit more... I put a little bit more detail into it. The way it'll work using the uh, very similar terms that we've already seen in the game like infusion ascension etc so when you hit max light level you will infuse all of your subclasses with light and it will ascend them so yeah some pretty popular terms you've been playing from year one so when you infuse light into your subclass it'll make everything a little bit stronger so for example a titan defender bubble instead of giving you for example like a 10 percent damage buff for weapons of light it'll give you a 15 or a 20 percent damage buff just something to make you a lot stronger your over shields in pve um, you can eat up a lot more damage, maybe they have double health, something along those lines. Double your armor, different passives that make you feel stronger for being that absolute max level. Now, of course, as with the last subclass, don't think of this at all as pertaining to PvP. This is just some strictly PvE thinking I've been putting into it. And again, just disregard PvP. Of course, a lot of this stuff will break the Crucible meta. Just a few more examples, when you choose your subclass, it could say Infused or Ascended Striker or Ascended Gunslinger, Ascended Stormcaller. And a good way to think about that would be all of your supers will be amplified by a significant amount. When your gold gun shoots, it'll be doing two times damage per shot. So if you have Active of Age Symbio, that's like shooting eight regular gold gun shots instead of four. And if you have something like Celestial Nighthawk, you'll be doing 12 times damage instead of six. This will just really make you feel super strong and really when you're max level you should be overpowered you should be able to just tear through content really easily and it should be hard to reach and it is right now because of double rng and it's a great reward for those people who do manage to get that far again pvp just disregard that so now to get into the next part just some specific perks that i think can only be unlocked through the light subclass we'll get into some for example and this idea is actually inspired by a Reddit post that was popular not too long ago. And I don't remember who posted it, but basically what he says, what, what he said was, if you're max light level, you should glow like a Super Saiyan. Now this got me thinking, if you see my Warlock's helmet when I respawn here, how it's bright glowing white, that's how your Guardian should look. Just an aura around your whole body, just letting everyone know, yeah, I'm bad ASS, I hit max level. Was I lucky? Yeah, I was luckier than you, because we all know we like to brag about our RNG sometimes, well at least I do. And just letting just making a statement you know it's purely cosmetic doesn't mean anything but it means you hit max level you're elite you're hardcore you did it and you should be able to have something to show for your hard work and that's just one thing of course some more perks to cover would be uh, when you go into the light subclass you can pick something 
from a perk tree where it'll say something along the lines of increased ammo for primaries or if you want to go more specific and break it down so it's not as overpowered you can say more ammo for hand cannons more ammo for machine guns and just increase super energy upon melee, melee kills borrowing perks from other subclasses but just making you overpowered just cranking everything to 11 every kill you get adds an extra 10 percent supercharge to your super meter uh every kill adds grenade energy and super energy or sorry grenade energy and melee energy there are just so many ways to make your guardian overpowered i think this would be a great way for bungie to just have fun with the formula inside the game as far as pve is concerned and just really like i said before crank it to 11 make us overpowered make us feel really strong and it's a great way to make the new content more relevant because once we know that these guys coming in are much stronger than us, it'll really put a fire under our butts, I think. Because we'll know these guys are an actual threat. Even at our highest levels, we were owning Oryx and owning Crota and Atheon. This new guy comes in and we're completely, we're just too weak and we can't do it. Really, I think it'll serve at, to make the coming bosses a little bit more threatening. Strike bosses, all of that. And... Yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I know this wasn't as detailed as, for example, the Frost or Ice subclass that I made for the Titan. But really, I think that there's just so many ways to make this subclass or this op to make this concept into a real thing inside the game. If Bungie did this, I think it would change a lot of things for the better because it'll really reward those endgame players who feel like they've been getting kind of shafted, especially with the controversial challenge mode that came out that was a bit too easy. And it'll really help create a more hardcore scene where Destiny is already seen as very casual. We need something to separate the hardcore from the casual in that respect. And of course, I don't mean casual is a bad thing, as I say always. It's just people who play more should get a little more, in my opinion. And there should be things in the game that not everyone can obtain right away. So that's it for the video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of a possible light subclass where you infuse your subclass and you ascend it to the next level. I would have loved to run around as an ascended striker dealing five times for some havoc damage to minions of the darkness. That just sounds like a ton of fun to me, honestly. Uh, or just imagine shooting your void bow and it can and it can stop a boss from moving. For example, Oryx won't be able to like move out of the way. He'll just st sit there kind of floating. It'd be kind of funny just to break the game in some kind of way. And yeah, end game players, they'd really appreciate it. So thank you all for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Leave your comments down below and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Oh, and of course, real quick at the end, my video for tomorrow will be showcasing how OP a Juggernaut Striker Titan can be, even without the buff. This is going to be pre-buff uh, gameplay tomorrow, so watch out for that one. I will be using Conspiracy Theory, so you have been warned, Conspiracy Theory Juggernaut Striker Titan is going to be great. Hope to see you guys there tomorrow. Y'all have a nice day.